Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you some of the books that I have recently read. Uh, it's been a while since I did this. The last time that I went through some books that I had read was for my Instagram chooses my TBR or Instagram hashtags choose my TBR video. So this will not encompass those because I talked about those in that video. I'll link that if you haven't seen it. That was a lot of fun. Um, I definitely want to do something like that again because I really enjoyed it. Uh, but I will go ahead and get started talking about the books that I haven't talked about that I've read in the last couple of months. The first one is one that I read quite a while ago um, and that is Robinson Crusoe which hilariously my entire life I thought this was pronounced Robinson Caruso. It's not. I listened to the audiobook of this and quickly found out I was wrong. Um, this is a classic. If you don't know what this is about, essentially it's about a, um, I think he's like in his 20s, early 20s. He's shipwrecked. He's the only survivor of the ship crash that he was a part of. Um, and he's essentially in this, this uninhabited island where he doesn't have any idea how far he is from, you know, the, the nearest continent or anything like that. And he is at first pretty terrified that it's inhabited by what he calls savages and just is this, basically it's this interesting character study about a man who basically makes an entire world for himself on this tiny island. So he learns how to make bread, how to tend a garden, how to um, trap and keep animals. And it's just really fascinating how he kind of goes about those things. So that part of the book I found interesting. However, it's incredibly tedious because at one point he tells this entire story and he's like, I kept a journal for the first whatever number of days. This is how my journal goes. And then he reiterates the entirety of what he just told you, but in journal form. So that was a little tedious. Um, and then we get into the part where he kind of encounters this native tribe and the way that he interacts with them, the way that he talks about them. Like you have to, it's, it, it's to get through the book essentially you have to look at it as this is a product of its time but it's also incredibly problematic when you think about colonialization and all of the things because essentially when he comes in contact and actually interacts with these natives he is all about capturing one and keeping them at keeping it as him as his servant and teaching him Christianity and changing his whole way of life and it's just like that whole part I was not down for at all. So basically I found this interesting to a point and that point was until he really starts to delve into his feelings, beliefs, and attitudes towards the natives. I also read these two adorable little books. Um, I talked about these in my book haul from New York, which is where I got these. I got these at the Mysterious Bookshop. They have an imprint, um, which is their Biblio Mysteries, where different authors write these little uh, Biblio Mysteries that center around bookstores or books, things like that. Both of these were really adorable. Um, this one, the one called Remaindered, was about a um, group of, so basically this man dies, he's found dead over a box of Agatha Christie's, which um, is a very big part of the story. And then uh, it's about the people who stay in, who like frequent his bookshop and the different kinds of characters and their connections. And this one unfolded in kind of an unexpected way. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It wasn't my favorite of the two. This one was my favorite of the two. This one was about a children's bookshop where books keep going missing and the business owner is basically not sure she can keep her bookstore open if this keeps happening because she's losing a lot of her inventory. 
and then we follow this woman who decides to take it upon herself to find out what's happening and to explore it and um, what she finds is really endearing and it also uh, deals really well with um, mental disabilities and I really really liked that so this one was super charming really good this one was unexpected but also fun to read I would definitely pick up more of these the next time I am at the mysterious bookstore and then I picked up a book that I didn't expect to pick up but uh, I have a niece who I was looking for something for her for Christmas that was a little different than the other things that she's been reading and this was so highly recommended for her age group that I couldn't pass it up and then when it got here I thought well I'm gonna have this in my home for two months before Christmas I might as well read it and now I'm gonna have to buy another set of these because I don't want to give these to her because I loved it so much um, Nevermore has been all over booktube, bookstagram, the blog, book blogs. So I'm sure you've heard about it, but essentially it's about a young girl, I think she's 10 or 11, um, 11, she's 11, who is, uh, who thinks she's cursed and is told that she is going to die on her 12th birthday. And then something unexpected happens and she ends up in this very magical whimsical world where she's competing in this um, set of trials to be part of the wondrous society and the wondrous society is kind of like the elite of this magical whimsical world and it's just about her kind of coming of age finding out her who she is outside of this curse she thought she had her whole life and the world building is so beautiful the characters are so much fun and you just, I don't know, you just kind of fall into this. And I enjoyed every minute of it. And every time I put it down, I just wanted to read some more of it. So I am currently reading Wondersmith and really enjoying it too. I don't know how many books are in this series, but I look forward to reading each and every one of them. And I guess I'm going to have to give this to my niece, but I know she'll love it. And then I actually DNF'd two books in a row. So the first one, very surprisingly to me, was Gin City. So I've talked about this a lot and how I pre-ordered it like months in advance. I love books about Gin and Gin lore. Um, the problem with this one, and the thing is, I think this is something that in a different mood I might really enjoy or in a different mindset I might really enjoy um, and I think there are people out this, there that will love this for all the reasons that I don't love it right now. Um, this is a book about so basically there's a kid whose father falls into a magic induced coma and he, the child, doesn't really know what's going on, doesn't know hardly anything about his family or their past or their involvement with the Jen community, and he quickly learns that something is not right here. But then he is essentially kidnapped. And uh, the rest of the book from there, and that all happens pretty quickly on in the beginning of the book, the rest of it on for pages and pages and pages is just all of this political back and forth between the genies and the emissaries who are humans who have entry into the gen world and the other humans and it's just a gen against gen and there's like this history and this weird otherworldly thing where the dad who's in a magic induced coma is like watching things happen but they're things from the past that you're meant to understand tie in and it's he needs to know this for the later outcome but it's a mess it's there's just too much happening and too many side plots so you have this side thing with the son you have this side thing with the dad you have the cousin who becomes the emissary 
and all the stuff that he's up to and then you're also trying to weave all these things together to understand like what politically went down with the Jin to bring us to this point and why is this kid important why was his father important all of that and it just for me was way too much and the pacing is just really wonky so it's like really fast at first and then it just screeches to a halt and then it'll have like bumps and then it'll just be really slow again and so it just it was not I don't know it just felt really um heavy and slowly paced and was not what I was expecting I expected it to be this like fast paced political kind of thriller-esque situation with genies but that's not really what I got. It's really a political novel. The other one that I DNF'd was this one, which is such a beautiful cover. Um, I picked this up while I was in New York, and it is a bunch of short stories that span from the dawn of the Electric Age to the future where the, where the planet is lit day and night. So that sounds fantastically fascinating like that sounds right up my alley and I was excited about something where all the stories are sort of tied together but not following the same characters obviously since it's over many uh, decades but there's just something about the writing style of this that did not gel with me so the first story was disturbing um, a lot of the imagery was really disturbing and also felt unnecessarily disturbing. And then it's just like, sometimes I wasn't really following the narrative from point A to point B. It would jump in places that I thought like, was I supposed to understand something that I didn't? And ultimately I just found this to, to go over my head, honestly. And I got about four stories in, I think I had four or five more to go and I was just like this is not enjoyable at all I have too many books that I want to get to and I ended up just DNFing it but then I picked up this one which I listened to on audiobook and I really enjoyed this so Sourdough is written by Robin Sloan who wrote Mr. Penumbrum's 24-hour bookstore I don't love Robin Sloan's plot elements so the whole first of this book, and this is the same thing with Mr. Penumbrums, like the whole first of the book was super good, super fascinating, really uh, well written and um, captivating. So I little, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but like one, I love bread. But also I really love making, like baking bread and I have always wanted to have my own sourdough starter but the whole uh basically this sourdough starter giving her her life back so she went from this from feeling very unsatisfied with her life working at this tech company to baking bread in her spare time that brought life back to her and really helped her sort of um become a happier person again and and just decide who she was that part was super fascinating and really well constructed. But then there's this weird magical-ish element about the starter that starts to take on, no pun intended or no whatever, a life of its own. And you get this weird thing happening towards the end of the book and then the actual end of the book is like what is happening genuinely what's happening uh, so that for me was completely not successful and took it from a five star book to a four four star book I still think that this is in my opinion better than Mr. Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore um, and I did really enjoy it I think that if you don't have a fascination or an interest with baking or sourdough bread in general this might not be as interesting to you as it was to me and then the last book was also a dnf so i dnf'd three books in the last couple of months 
Um, that one was Start Without Me by Joshua Max Feldman. I picked this up from Malaprops off of their um, ARC shelf. So when you spend a certain amount of money, they let you pick an ARC off their ARC shelf. I picked this one because it looked fun and interesting and like something I might enjoy, but was outside of my normal kind of reading preferences. And um, it's a contemporary about two people who are kind of in a down part of their life. Um, it's set around Thanksgiving they run into each other and then it's kind of about their interactions and how they help each other i believe the thing about this is i didn't like either of the characters i didn't care what happened to them i kind of felt like at least one of them deserved what they got and honestly i got two-thirds of the way through this listening to the audiobook and it wasn't that i wasn't engaged with it while I was listening to it. It was mostly that I just genuinely didn't care how this turned out for either of these characters. I didn't. And at that point I realized that it really wasn't worth continuing. Again, I have too many books that I want to get to. Plenty of audiobooks I can be listening to. This just was not it. So I think maybe if you are into contemporary first of all and then second of all if you are into unlikable characters that this might be something that you would be interested in and enjoy for me neither of those things are are things that tick boxes for me so it just wasn't my cup of tea that is it for the most recent books that i have read or dnf'd um I meant to do these more frequently and somehow I managed to be doing them less frequently. Not really sure how that happened. Life happens. Uh, hopefully that won't be a pattern and these will be a little bit more regular going forward. That is definitely my hope. Uh, I would love to hear if you read any of these, what you thought of them, if I encourage you to pick them up. I love to hear if you add them to your wish list. And if you don't have anything else to say, you can just leave an emoji, let me know that you are here. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.